Talk with Tamara. On today's show, I have Mr. and Mrs. Colden back today to talk about their daughter, Phoenix Colden. Phoenix has been missing from St. Louis, Missouri since December of 2011. Yes. yes. Okay, how have you all been? There hasn't been much change. Things seem to, at times, be worse than before. Mm -hmm. um, my wife has had several bouts with her heart. She had more stents put in a few few months back. So things have not gotten any better. You know, we still don't know where Phoenix is. And we haven't had any more leads uh, as to people uh, calling and saying that they've seen Phoenix here or they've seen her there. So we don't know any more now than what we did then. Mm -hmm. It feels as though I'm not living. Mm -hmm. I'm alive and I never knew that a person's body had as many tears because I cry every single day. I try not to, um, but sometimes it just um, comes over me. I don't go out very much mm -hmm. because I can't keep my composure. It um, doesn't take hardly anything because I can't stop thinking about my daughter. It just feels like we're just existing. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Um, can you refresh my audience on the circumstances of Phoenix's disappearance? This was uh, December 18th, 2011, a very nice December day for, for it being winter. And um, Phoenix and her mother went to church that morning. Um, church is over 12 o'clock and then there's no, normally a fellowship until 1 o'clock. And uh, they end up going to the store before coming home. And they came home and did normal things until about 3 p.m. when Phoenix backed out the driveway. And we haven't seen her since. Mm -hmm. And um, we didn't know it the same day that Phoenix's car was found, the same day she left home. And we didn't find that car for two weeks afterwards, which hampered the investigation for, for two weeks. And if we had known that that car had been towed that very same day when we called and reported her missing, it would have been much easier uh, for us to uh, start an investigation to find Phoenix. Mm -hmm. The police would have uh, believed um, um, her missing instead of saying that she has a right to go missing. Mm -hmm. uh, they would have thought more of her being abducted than just a, a runaway. Mm -hmm. yes, it's, uh, that's what they believed at the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, um, I would like to say that, go back to the, the term, find her car. We did not find her car. Mm -hmm. Someone called and told us exactly where Phoenix's car was, what time it was, um, a call came in to, a 911 call, went in to the East St. Louis Police Department, East St. Louis, Illinois. Mm -hmm. which is another state <laughs> from where we live. Um, it's like right over the river. Right over the river, just just like um, South Tennessee, Haven is to, to like Memphis. South Haven, Miss, uh, Mississippi is to Memphis, Memphis Tennessee. Uh, but they're two different states, mm -hmm. two different jurisdictions. Um, someone called us, called, and, and um, it's, it's very peculiar because I've thought about it and thought about it and thought about it. Mm -hmm. This person called and asked me, what is this I hear about Phoenix being missing? If this is somebody's idea of a joke, it's not funny. And I told him it was not a joke and gave him all the particulars about what happened that day uh, on the 18th, two weeks prior. And he asked for a description of Phoenix's car and her license plate which I gave him all of that. Now, it took me quite a while, over a year, mm -hmm. well over a year, 
thinking about things, going over things in my mind, reconstructing that day, the day before, um, and the time in between that day and any other day in the uh, after that. And I thought about it, and all of a sudden it hit me. What was wrong with that conversation? And it's that he already knew mm -hmm. that Phoenix was missing. Mm -hmm. That person who called already knew that Phoenix was missing. So why would he call and say what he said to me? He had to have known to even call the next. He knew because I sent out two emails. Mm -hmm. One was um, to everybody on my email list about less than a week, maybe three or four days after Phoenix left the house. Mm -hmm. And then another one a few days later. Mm -hmm. And in the second email, there was an attachment, and the attachment was the first flyer that I did. And that flyer had maybe three or five pictures of Phoenix, a description of Phoenix, her weight, her height, her age, um, a description of her vehicle, and a license plate number. Mm -hmm. And I, I mentioned it to Lawrence. And he said, why don't you look in your file, your email file, and see if that email is still there. And sure enough, all my emails, except the ones I had deleted, were in my email file. And I, I said, that's what's been bothering me. That's what's been bothering me. The last name on the email list He already knew. Mm -hmm. He knew, what, three, four days after Phoenix went missing, and then um, maybe two days after that when I sent the uh, another email with the attachment. So he didn't he call already, as soon as you got sent no, the email? No, he called January 1st, which was exactly two weeks later, a Sunday. Mm -hmm. So my question is to myself and to Lawrence, <laughs> Why did he call and pretend like he didn't know? There's his name right there on my email list. Mm -hmm. So he already knew. He pretended he didn't know. He already had Phoenix's description, description of the car, and um, license plate number and all that. Why did he pretend like he didn't know? And why did he ask me for her license plate number and description of the car when he already had it? Why did it take him so long from the time I sent those two emails till January 1st to call us? Mm -hmm. And then he said on January 1st after he got this information, I'll see what I can find out and I'll call you back. Well. It was less than 15 minutes later that he called back. And something bothered me about that, too. Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, something's wrong with this picture. Something's wrong with this picture. I know what it is. He called back too soon. He called back too soon to have known nothing. Mm -hmm. And the police, the St. Louis County Police in Missouri, had been running those plates all this time and they didn't find anything. So how did he do that in less than 15 minutes? It's a puzzlement. That's what you call, Opal's call a puzzlement. Mm -hmm. I'm confused. <laughs> you know, I'm confused. <laughs> this doesn't make sense. There's a lot in this situation that just doesn't make sense. It's like a puzzle. You got all these pieces and you you can see you can see the connections and you can see the 
oddities, mm -hmm. but you can't quite put it together. And I detest mm -hmm. puzzles, jigsaw puzzles, you know, the ones, the big huge ones that would fit this table and you got all of this is the sky mm -hmm. <laughs> and all of this is blue mm -hmm. and then you got a person here. I detest those kind of puzzles. I've never been good at them and, and, and this, um, I told my husband, we need somebody who has that, that whose brain works like putting puzzles together. Mm -hmm. Because I believe we have the pieces of the puzzle. We just don't know how to put it together. Is this person in law enforcement the reason he was able to get the information? I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that his job was one thing. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go into any mm -hmm. details. Specifics, right. But I don't know. I don't know. Okay, you you don't you you didn't know him to be in law enforcement to be able to pull up information that fast. No, I didn't know it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I mean, but he, even he, but if the police, the St. Louis, you. if they had not pulled it up in their NCIC, the national database or whatever, you're trying to figure out how he was able yeah. to get something so quick. Right. Mm -hmm. Is this person still in contact with you all? No. Okay. <laughs> like so many other people. <laughs> in this puzzle. Hmm. Um, has there been, well, you kind of talked about there has not been any updates. Right, there hasn't been any, any updates. Um, not of late. In the past two months, we haven't, there hasn't been any updates, but we do know that it's a, an ongoing investigation. Mm -hmm. They tell us that if there's a lead comes in, they will follow up on the lead. Mm -hmm. um, they can't say a whole lot because it's still an ongoing investigation. I tried to get reports um, from the case or the case file and couldn't do that because it's an ongoing investigation. Mm -hmm. So if there are no leads going in, the case is still open, but it's not being actively worked because there are no leads. Mm -hmm and we're not getting weekly or monthly updates, so we actually don't know exactly what's going on. Mm -hmm. So you, it's the best guess scenario. We have never gotten weekly or monthly or um, every other month or every six month updates. This is an ongoing investigation. That's a catchphrase, mm -hmm. uh, like, um, on my job, my, my job that I used to hold, it's our policy and procedure to do this. It's just a catchphrase that you give a person to get them to go away and be quiet. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, it's an ongoing investigation and, you know, we have a file and when we, you know, get something we'll let you know. It's just like saying, okay, I have this book right here and um, I know what's in the book, but I never touched the book. Mm -hmm. So basically there. what they're doing is they're waiting for, you feel like they're waiting for someone else to, to come forward, because I, I understand what you're saying. Police officers say, police departments say all the time, well, the case is active. Mm -hmm. What they're saying is it's just open until somebody says something. Mm -hmm. Nobody said anything. Mm -hmm. So it's just, there. It's just there. There. And there. it's not open either. Mm -hmm. This book isn't open. Mm -hmm. It's closed. It's just, but it's there. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. Um, do you feel, well, we just talked about if you feel the police department is still working it. What would you like to see them do, the police department? I would like to see them communicate with us as much as possible, at least several times a month, give us some type of communication mm -hmm. as to where they are in the case. If it's, uh, there are no leads coming in, tell us that. If it's, if the case is still open, tell us that. If the case is here on my desk, when something happens, I'll follow up on it. Mm -hmm. It's here, but nothing's going on. 
So mm -hmm. nothing's going on. There's not much we can do right now. Mm -hmm. I can revisit uh, the, the participants in the case, her friends, uh, our friends, uh, family, and so forth. I, I can do that, but there's nothing going on right now. Mm -hmm. But to say nothing, that's not that's not right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would like to see uh, them to be truthful. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what do you feel that they've been untruthful about? Mostly if you can everything. Elaborate, elaborate on that. Mostly everything. Mm -hmm. I've I've caught them in untruths. Mm -hmm. um, and and that's. I have a problem with people who are not truthful with me, especially when I catch them. Mm -hmm. I don't trust them anymore. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. And you can't get into specifics about what no, they've been under? Okay. All right. Um, now, with Phoenix's friends, do you feel that Phoenix? Has her, has her friends been helpful at all? I don't think Phoenix really had any friends. I would say they were mostly associates. When I think of a friend, I think of someone who's going to be with you and help you when you need help. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a friend, someone who's going to be there with you through thick and thin, someone that you can talk to and lean on and, mm -hmm. and and rely on their confidence and things like that. That that is a friend. Mm -hmm. The people that she was associated with, they were, that was that was it. She was associating uh, with these guys because none of them came forward to say, Mr. and Mrs. Colden, I know Phoenix. We hung out here together. We did this together. She was this type of person, so forth. We didn't hear anything like that from any of these people that she's supposedly knew. We met people mm -hmm. when we went in different places and we were passing our palm cards. They would say, oh, I, I know Phoenix. We met one couple. They had gotten married. They went to school with Phoenix at um, so We remember Phoenix, but they never called mm -hmm. uh, to say anything. Um, the people that she associated with and knew that she hung out with never came by the house to say, what can we do? Um, is there anything we can do to help you? I know that Phoenix used to like to go here, and I know she used to hang out with this person or that person to give us leads or anything like that. Mm -hmm. We never got anything like that um, from from any of them. Mm -hmm. Her boyfriend, we never got anything like that from him. Mm -hmm. um, from her boyfriend's family, we never got anything like that from them. They mm -hmm. never came by, never called or uh, offered to help, and when we called, him to speak to him about if he had seen Phoenix or knew, know where Phoenix is. Uh, they got upset, called us, told us to leave him alone, don't bother him, uh, things like that. Uh, we were just trying to find our daughter. Um, we're supposed to call him. He's supposed to be her boyfriend. Mm -hmm. So, but um, it seemed like they took it the wrong way, as if we were harassing them. Mm -hmm. Did and, he ever say anything? Not to us. Mm -hmm. I just don't know where Phoenix is. He told a lot of lies to my to my wife, but when I spoke with him, he just didn't know where she was. Never spoke to her. But then he said he lied. He said he hadn't spoke with her uh, the night before and so forth. But he had, and they were just never helpful to us. Um, in these, in I believe it was November about 2012, TV One did a special on, on Phoenix. They came to um, Missouri and they interviewed us. Mm -hmm. And um, they came to our home, they photographed our home and they photographed the truck and everything. Mm -hmm. um, they even drove the truck away from the house and photographed it leaving the house so they could depict how she, how she left left our home and they ran a special in January of 2013 and it was a two-part special where they had a, a guy on for the first part his name was Maurice um, James. James and um, 
Phoenix was the second part. Maurice James went missing from, from San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And um, Phoenix was the second part of, of that program. And they were asking people that knew Phoenix, mm -hmm. would they be a part of the program mm -hmm. and speak about Phoenix and, and tell what they knew. Only one person did that, uh, one of her friends, and they had been good friends for, for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And he knew some things that he didn't tell us also, but he, they were pretty, her, him and Phoenix were pretty close. They were very close. Very close. They were very close. But her they finished each other's sentences. Yes, that's how close they were. Mm -hmm. But her boyfriend and his family said that they didn't know Phoenix that well. Mm -hmm. And they had been together for, I know, three years, probably more than that. And when you're together with someone like that and you spend time together, you're spending time with your family and with his family. And we know that she went to different functions with his family. Mm -hmm. So you get to know a person. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that you have a son and he dating a young lady. He's going to bring her around. Mm -hmm. You're going to get to know her. Mm -hmm. You're going to get to know her family also. Right. Absolutely. But they said they didn't know her that well, so they didn't want to participate in the program. Mm -hmm. Did he participate? He didn't participate either. No, he and didn't. And he didn't explain why? He didn't wouldn't explain why either. No, but they did put out a lot of uh, mistruths. I won't say lies, I'll say mistruths about lies. Phoenix and, lies. and Mr. and Mrs. Colden. Lies. There were a lot of uh, uh, lies and uh, mistruths um, uh, put out about us mm -hmm. from that family. That family, yes. Mm -hmm. Would you all like to elaborate on that? The lies? That they said that they did not know Phoenix that well, and I found amongst uh, Phoenix's, some of Phoenix's uh, things in her room a program from a funeral. Mm -hmm. And it was one of their, somebody in their family, uh, because I saw in the, the on the back side, I think uh, one of the pallbearers was somebody in their family. Mm -hmm. Lawrence called a grandparent. Mm -hmm. uh, we got a phone number, and they said that they knew Phoenix. The, the boyfriend's grandparents said they knew Phoenix, and they had met her at a graduation or a wedding. Okay. Something like that. Now, Mr. Colden mentioned three years. We don't know how long Phoenix was with him. Mm -hmm. We don't know. We're just piecing things together. We'll know when we see Phoenix, mm -hmm. but I don't think she'll really want to talk about that and it really doesn't matter because it's in the past. Mm -hmm. You can't change the past, but you can talk about what you've learned mm -hmm. and how you're going to proceed into the future. Mm -hmm. um, her, the term BFF, do you know what that means? Mm -hmm. Okay. Phoenix had a so-called BFF who lived on the opposite side of the street from us, like four houses down. Mm -hmm. So you could stand on our front porch and see their front porch and mm -hmm. vice versa. And they walk their dog across down the street on the sidewalk, which they had to go right in front of our house. The BFF, her mother, her brother, her stepfather, they mm -hmm. walked their, their dog um, across the st a street from us but twice a day. Mm -hmm. They never came over to say, Hi, cat. Hi, dog. Hi, Mr. whatever your name is. Mm -hmm. They never did. The BFF didn't. Mother, well, they did come down there one time. Mm -hmm. The mother and stepfather came down there one time to our house to complain about the police going to the BFF's job questioning her. And mm -hmm. they wanted us to stop, make the police stop. And our um, response was, we didn't send the police, and we can't make them do anything, and we can't make them stop doing anything. Mm -hmm. Well, if you don't do something about this, we're going to get a lawyer. I says, well, you just go quiet, right ahead and throw your money away, because we have no power over the police. Mm -hmm. That was the only time 
that they came down to our house. The BFF, uh, when she and Phoenix would go to this little convenience store in the neighborhood, and that's where we thought Phoenix had gone that day she left the house. But I went in the convenience store one day, and uh, the owner was very, very upset about Phoenix being missing because she had been coming in his little convenience store since we moved in that neighborhood, since she was about 12 years old. And uh, he had helped raise some money uh, for, for us to buy flyers or get a PI or whatever. But he mentioned to me one day, he says, you know, and I'm not going to say the name, her little BFF hasn't been in this store but once since Phoenix has been missing. And when she came in, I asked her about Phoenix and she didn't have anything to say. And I asked her if um, she knew how I could get some flyers because I want, he said he wanted to put up some flyers and help pass out some flyers. And she told him that she would get him some flyers and, and uh, bring them back. He said, I haven't seen her since. He says, I think that's really odd, don't you? Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, I think that's odd too. Mm -hmm. He said, she hasn't been here but once. And she hasn't been back since. And she didn't seem concerned at all about Phoenix. And I agree. They, these people who you say, you use the word friend, they're not friends. Mm -hmm. um, Do you think there was any peer pressure? Peer pressure? I think there was pressure, but not from her peers. Mm -hmm. um, a peer, to me, is someone who is equal mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. The only thing that was the same between them is that they were human beings, mm -hmm. homo sapiens. Their values and their their thinking was not the same as Phoenix. Mm -hmm. um, Phoenix wanted to be liked. Mm -hmm. Everyone who met Phoenix really liked her. Mm -hmm. We moved here to be closer to family and she was excited about growing up with her little female relatives, mm -hmm. and um, they didn't really accept her. Okay. Well, I'm going to stop you right there because we got to take a break. Okay. We'll pick up when we come back. Okay. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Real Talk with Tamara. I've been speaking with Lawrence and Goldia Colden. They're the parents of Phoenix Colden. Phoenix has been missing from St. Louis, Missouri since December of 2011. Um, when we left off, before we went to break, we was talking about Phoenix and peer pressure and, you know, how her boyfriend had not been upcoming, uh, mm -hmm. well, forthcoming, mm -hmm. I said upcoming, mm -hmm. and how you all had moved here to, um, to kind of be around family. Mm -hmm. We want to pick up there. And I'll ask you something about, you know, the, the boyfriend after, you know, you finished okay. talking about that. Well, Phoenix uh, was very excited about being able to see her female uh, cousins on a regular basis and to grow up with them, but she was not accepted the way she should have been. Mm -hmm. And the male cousins really, really liked Phoenix because they, they you know, she's funny, um, she can play basketball, she's mm -hmm. into all kind of sports, uh, she likes football, Dallas Cowboys is her favorite team. And the fencing, they were just fascinated with that. But the female cousins, uh, some of them didn't even say ten words to her. Mm -hmm. uh, the others made fun of her. So Phoenix was kind of looking for, um, she began to go outside of her circle mm -hmm. that she should have stayed in. And the people that she um, started associating with, she didn't really uh, tell us about them except for maybe two or three of them. Um, they were, they're not her peers, I don't believe, because they don't have the same values. Mm -hmm. They don't have the same um, belief system. Mm -hmm. uh, one of her so-called friends, I say acquaintance, uh, I heard them talking one day and, and uh, she asked Phoenix, why do you go to church so much? You go to church on Sunday, and then 
You go to church on Wednesday. Why, why do you go to church so much? And Phoenix explained to her, Sunday is our worship service, and I, I, I go to, to hear uh, the sermon, and I sing in the choir, and I play the handbells. And on Wednesday is Bible study and choir practice. And that's what mm -hmm. I'm going to do. That's what I've always done, and that's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. And um, so that just goes to show that they, they didn't really have the same belief system. Um, so I don't think you can call them peers. Mm -hmm. But she wanted to. She wanted. She wanted to fit in. She wanted to fit in, but young people, you should not try to fit in where you don't fit in, so to speak. <laughs> you can't take a circle. Mm -hmm. Let's see Phoenix as a circle, and then you take say this cell phone. See if you can put that self, make that cell phone fit in this circle. Mm -hmm. Do it. See if you can make it fit. No, it won't fit. Mm -hmm. It doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. So you have to look for people who have, who think the same way, have the same belief system, mm -hmm. have the same value system, mm -hmm. rather than someone who looks like you, mm -hmm. so to speak. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. I mean, that's what I found, too. That's right. the reason why I'm a loner, because I, I would write, we, we all have different belief systems. Right. That's the truth. And I try to teach my girls, it's okay to be alone. Sometimes it's better. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we have to realize also that some of us will make that pig fit in that hole. And that's the worst thing that we can do. Mm -hmm. They will try to make it fit, but it really doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. And when that person who was was tried they tried to force into that that uh, uh, shape when that person realizes that this is hurting me mm -hmm. I don't fit then they go back to where they were supposed to be in mm -hmm. the first place which is exactly I'm glad you said that which is exactly what I believe was happening. Mm -hmm. Because the day that Phoenix left our driveway, after she played in the handbell choir, I looked for her. I looked for her in the choir stand, which was slightly to my left. She wasn't there. I looked on the other side of the sanctuary, which is where she had started sitting, way on the other side of the sanctuary, away from me. And I couldn't figure out why. And I wonder, where, where could she be? And all of a sudden, I turned around, and there she was, mm -hmm. right over my left shoulder, not in the pew directly behind me, but the second pew behind me. And she kind of smiled, mm -hmm. and I looked up at the cross, which was right behind the, the pulpit, and I said, closed my eyes and said, thank you, Jesus. She was coming back. So I believe that that day, m not that day, but sometime prior to that, because I saw other things prior to that, Phoenix had begun to realize that whatever was going on, she didn't belong there. Mm -hmm. And she was coming back mm -hmm. to us. Mm -hmm. Because I believe somebody, one of those so-called peers <laughs> or friends, mm -hmm was trying to turn her against us, to pull her away from the family. This is family being me and Lawrence and Phoenix and Grams, mm -hmm. my mother. They were trying to pull her away from that family and to get her to believe what they were believing and do what they were doing, which Phoenix had been taught She had been taught mm -hmm. from this book. Mm -hmm. These things are not right. Mm -hmm. um, the last time you was here, you kind of mentioned that you found a um, a little note that said something about her parents. Would you want to elaborate on that? 
it wasn't really a note. It was, um, you know, I say Phoenix likes to journal, but it wasn't in a one particular book. <laughs> it was, um, I got a notepad or in a notebook. Mm -hmm. She'd just write down her thoughts. Mm -hmm. And what we found is what I think was her reproduction of a conversation. Mm -hmm. Don't you think? Okay, yes it was. Mm -hmm. She was writing down, mm -hmm. she wrote down from her memory, I guess, something that had been she and somebody else um, had been talking about and most of the talking was to Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And it's very clear, in my opinion, and in Lawrence's opinion, who the people are. Mm -hmm. I believe it was from the conversation that was had the night before she went missing between her and whoever spoke for that 120, 116 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's what those notations were from. Were they able to pull up the name of the person? That she spoke with for 160 by the phone, minutes? By the phone number, we know um, who the phone number belongs to, but it's kind of difficult to say who was speaking mm -hmm. because someone else may have used the phone. Used the phone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can't specifically say mm -hmm. it was this, this, this person, so we don't know exactly who was speaking, but I believe what she wrote was from that conversation the night mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. In that telephone conversation. We recognized the phone number. Like, mm -hmm. this is my phone. You mm -hmm. see, on our phone num phone uh, records, my phone number. Mm -hmm. But you can't tell if that was me talking to somebody else because Lawrence may have been using my phone, mm -hmm. or uh, my mother might have been at my house and, and used my phone. So mm -hmm. we can't tell. But. Um, the so-called boyfriend said that he didn't talk to Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And he may have been telling the truth. He may have been. But someone the, else in the family. Yeah, the phone number mm -hmm. was his phone number. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he did talk to Phoenix the night before. Or, I'm sorry. There is a record on our phone bill of 160 minutes from his phone. I'll mm -hmm. put it that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, why do you all feel that he has not? Because if he was supposedly her boyfriend, why do you all feel that he has not wanted to say anything? I mean, he's over the age of 17, so he doesn't need his parents' permission, right? Right. So, I know you all said that his parents intervened, but I, of course he doesn't need her, their permission. So why do you all feel he hasn't wanted to talk? It wasn't his parents who intervened so much, but his mother. Okay. And his mother threatened me. Mm-hmm. And I, um, I notified the lead detective of, of, of that incident. Mm-hmm. Okay. And if, if, you, if you have a dominant person that you're close to, and he may be close, very, very close to his mother, mm -hmm. and if she's a dominant person and she tells him to be quiet, not to say anything, then quite likely he would do that. Mm -hmm. And not say anything or come around or try to participate in helping us to find Phoenix and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. We just don't. We just don't know. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people would say that it, it would be quite odd mm -hmm. because yes. why would she want him to shut up? Mm -hmm. I mean, I hate to put it that blunt. Mm -hmm. Right. You know. Mm -hmm. Why would she want him to shut up when someone that he knows, a friend of his, supposedly a close friend of his, is missing? You would think the parents and all would want to be a part of the search. You would. Yes, I would think. You would think. Mm -hmm. One would think. Mm -hmm. But remember, we don't all have the same value system. That's true. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know why I keep harping on this. I, I, 
I don't know why, but has he ever been questioned by the police, the boyfriend? We were told he was questioned. We were told he even took a, a polygraph. Oh, a polygraph. Mm -hmm. uh, we were told those things. Uh, we don't know for sure, but we were told. So but we have to, at, at this point, trust what the police mm -hmm. says. Mm -hmm. um, I was told directly during my, uh, I call it, they call it questioning, but I call it interrogation mm -hmm. at the police department uh, for over eight, eight hours, um, that uh, Mrs. Colden, he took a polygraph and he passed it, and my response to, him, to the officer was, I'm not surprised. If he did take a polygraph, I'm not surprised that he passed it, but you know what? I don't know what questions you ask him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You could have asked him, is your name such and such? And that's his name, and he said yes. Mm -hmm. Is, uh, are you a male? He says yes. So I don't know what questions you ask, plus, one of his friends, who is also a so-called friend of Phoenix's, mm -hmm. told me specifically that she did not believe him when he said that he didn't know where Phoenix was. And I asked her why, and she said, because he's a good liar, Mrs. Colden. Mm -hmm. That's what <laughs> one of his friends said. So I'm not surprised. But I don't, we don't know if he took a polygraph or not. Okay, and she didn't elaborate any more on that, the Phoenix friend, why she didn't believe him other than that. She just said he's a good liar. Mm -hmm. There are other things that we spoke to her about that we really can't um, mm -hmm. elaborate. Talk about. Yeah, we can't elaborate on it now. But some, one day we will be able to. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the last time you all was here, we talked about how um, the young ladies in, in St. Louis, I don't really like to, although, it, you know, it's, it's, the, it's a lot of truth to it, I don't really like to, to talk a whole lot about race. I, I just don't. Mm -hmm. But I guess it's a part of our lives. It, in St. Louis, there are a lot of female blacks going missing. And you don't hear a whole lot about it. Why do you all think? Well, I think, Tamara, if you miss the evening news, the local news, mm -hmm. today, you won't hear about it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do your due diligence in keeping track of things like this, you may not hear about it. A lot of people don't watch local news. A lot of people don't read newspapers and so forth. And if you don't have someone in the news media who is tracking these types of things, or who are, who's making it public, mm -hmm. then you may not hear about all these people going missing. Mm -hmm. uh, just in East St. Louis, well, maybe it was a year or so after Phoenix went missing, there were a couple of other young ladies that went missing in East yes. St. Louis, um, in the same area where we had found her truck. Mm -hmm. And not even a year. Not even a year. Now, we missed that on the local news, but someone sent us newspapers from East St. Louis with the articles in that. Mm -hmm. We didn't hear about it anymore on the local news. Mm -hmm. It's just that, hey, they went missing, so we reported it once, that's it. Mm -hmm. We don't need to report it anymore. It seemed like that's the type of philosophy that they have uh, with the local news around in that area. Mm -hmm. um, there is one guy on the local news there, his name is Chris Hayes, who does a very good job of, uh, uh, of reporting on um, sex trafficking mm -hmm. and missing people. And they did some very good detective work in how they would find some of these girls who were in these hotels and were advertising themselves mm -hmm. for sale in, the, in these hotels. And um, it was very clever how, how they did it. And I won't say how they did it, but it was reported mm -hmm. how, how they found out um, where some of these girls were mm -hmm. and were able to rescue them and, and arrest their so-called pimps mm -hmm. that who, who had lured them into uh, mm -hmm. this, this, this sex game that they have going on. But when you look at these young ladies that have gone missing. Some of these young ladies 
the word on the street is that they are being sold. Mm -hmm. Sex trafficking is such a lucrative business, mm -hmm. whereas you can take a young lady and you can sell her over and over and over mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. Instead of being in the dope business where you can sell some dope and it's gone, mm -hmm. you have a young lady you can continue to sell um, for years on hand mm -hmm. and continue to make money. And they're talking about a $30 billion a year business, I believe, mm -hmm. what they're, they're saying about this uh, sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. So when these young ladies uh, are coming up missing, um, if you're not paying attention, you would never know that they're missing because they are not, there's not a, an effort to make it known that these girls are gone over mm -hmm. and over and over again. It's just, not, it's just not there. And I think the sad part about that is a lot of people have a misunderstanding also as it relates to sex trafficking. They think that these girls are, that, that they don't understand that often a lot of them are being forced. They are being yes. forced. They think that, well, they shouldn't let people sweet talk them. Some of them are being sweet talk, yes. but some of them are being kidnapped yes. forcefully. Yes. That's what the police leave out mm -hmm. and forced. Mm -hmm. I think I've talked about that a lot on my shows. I'm very, you know, passionate about that mm -hmm. because I have girls. It's been a whole lot of girls. Cause I was just in the doctor's office the day before yesterday, and I was talking to one of the doctors, and she was asking me about one of my shows, mm -hmm. and she proceeded to tell me about her granddaughter. She said, well, I'm happy you're doing shows like that. She said, because about two months ago, and I didn't hear this on the news here in Memphis, mm -hmm. she said, my granddaughter was in her car she said the sun had gone down it wasn't dark yet so she was bent over in her car and um, a truck drove up next to her got out with a shotgun and said mm. you're going with me Cock shotgun right, she good. said her granddaughter said you can have everything in my car you can have my purse but I'm not going you're gonna have to kill me out here mm -hmm. and that's what I try and stress to people never let them take you to another location mm -hmm. because if they do that's it Yes. So oftentimes yes. these girls aren't being sweet talked, they're being kidnapped mm -hmm. and forced and drugged into stuff. And that's what the police and a whole lot of people, and I hate to come down on the police like that, but the truth is just the truth. Mm -hmm. They don't want to send pandemonium. And another thing, I spoke about female blacks and I don't like to bring up race, but a lot of female blacks are being kidnapped because they're easier. Mm -hmm. They're easier because they don't get the media coverage that they should get. So they get our children. Something needs to be done. I just get very emotional because I have girls and it's just too many girls coming up missing. And I was there, I had been talking to some families in St. Louis. Every one of them are black. Every one of them. I see, I see my camera person when I get emotional. I you know, I get loud. That's and I a very good point. Another thing, uh, that's uh, a very Tamara. good point that you came up with, Tamara. Uh, um, got the news media not getting the coverage, and, and <coughs> the black girls coming up being kidnapped, and because of them, they don't get the coverage mm -hmm. that they should get. That's mm -hmm. a very good point. So they're a target. Mm -hmm. they're a target. Our children yeah. are a target, yeah. and if I keep trying to sugarcoat it and say, "Well, you know," and I don't like to talk about race because I feel like we're all the same. Mm -hmm. That's how I was yeah. raised. Yes. You know, yeah. but it, it's happening. Mm -hmm. Another thing, Tamara, in passing out the palm cards, I have to bring this up. Mm -hmm. We were we got here last night, and we stopped to get something to eat. And wherever I go, I pass out the palm cards. Mm -hmm. I we were in a restaurant, and I gave it to gave a palm card to all of the young ladies behind the counter. And. Someone said to to uh, to Mr. Colden, she probably ran away. I overheard him say that. He overheard say that. That is one of the worst things that a person could say to the parent of a young lady who says right here is missing. Mm -hmm. Now, a runaway is missing. But a runaway is someone who leaves of their own free will. Mm -hmm. Now, they are missing, yes, but it should be noted on any flyer mm -hmm. or palm card or wherever they're using that this is a runaway. Okay? Mm -hmm. But Phoenix is not 
a runaway. Because at the time she was 23. She was 23 years old. She's 26 now. Uh -huh. She's alive. She's 26 years old. And I believe that Phoenix left our house to meet someone uh -huh. that uh -huh. day. Uh -huh. And she had every intention to I'll come, come back. back home and she will be back home. Okay, we're going to take a break okay. and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Real Talk with Tamara. I've been speaking with Lawrence and Godia Colden. They're the parents of Phoenix Colden, who has been missing from St. Louis, Missouri, without a trace since December of 2011. Um, of course, this is their second time here. They're diligent in um, keeping this out there about their daughter, about her um, going missing. Um, if you've been looking at the show, you see, you've heard what they've talked about. Um, the case is open, but it's it's really not, you know, being worked. So they're taking it upon themselves to um, travel and go on different shows to talk about, you know, what has happened to Phoenix, you know, to in hopes of, of finding Phoenix and getting her back home safe. And we've come to a close. And um, is there anything you would like to say in closing, Mr. Cohen? Uh, yes, I would like to ask the fathers of the world to take into account their mothers, their sisters, their aunties, their nieces, whenever they go and open up their wallets to try and buy some sex. I would like for them to take into account that it, whose mother it is, whose sister it is, whose auntie it is, whose daughter it is, whose niece it is that you're paying for sex. Think about that and maybe you won't do it. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Cullinan? I'd like to say that um, we, I, I'm not going to say <clears throat> try, <clears throat> we did raise Phoenix right. We raised Phoenix according to this book. Mm -hmm. We taught Phoenix the difference between right and wrong. I'm one of these type of people who does not delegate her responsibility. Phoenix was given to us from God, the the one and only authority in our lives. And um, I think too many parents delegate the authority that God has given them to parent and be responsible for their child. Um, too many children are walking around with these things and what they're doing is really about nothing. Mm -hmm. If we want to raise our children um, to be productive citizens, to be intelligent, to, to uh, have a good life, we need to get back to this. Mm -hmm. We need to get back to this. And if you don't have one of these, but you have one of these, guess what? You can get an app on this mm -hmm. and read that. Mm -hmm. We need to get back to God mm -hmm. in this country. Mm -hmm. We need to get um, to, to, to be responsible for each other. We need to take responsibility for our children. We need to teach them what is right. And when those children go astray, which some of them may, mm -hmm. if they have been taught what is right, they will come back, mm -hmm. and Phoenix will be back with us. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank you all for for traveling here. Um, to I know it's you know it's, we wish it was under other circumstances, but um, they traveled all the way from St. Louis to be here to uh, speak about their daughter. But I just want to say this: I challenge my audience to start researching this. You know, and my camera person is going to kill me. But I challenge my audience to start researching human trafficking and sex slavery and start questioning why and start looking into why it is not being talked about the way that it should be talked about and why is so many female blacks and male blacks because yes. the spirit of perversion is oh. going awry. Yes. Coming yes. up missing and your children are leaving home to go to school and you never see them again. I challenge you to start looking into it and start making a fuss about it. We're in the process of getting together like a conference for March of 2015. We're going to be, it's, going, it's dedicated to uh, families of missing persons and um, cold case homicide victims. Um, 
I, my my camera person kind of got me off. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Combobulated. Just combobulated. <laughs> but I challenge you to start looking into this. Um, of course, I always look into it. I'll be constantly doing shows on it. They can't stop me from doing shows on it. But um, I want to thank you for tuning in to Real Talk with Tamara. Until next time, God bless you. If you have a loved one or a friend that was the victim of an unsolved homicide and the case has gone cold, or if you know of a missing persons case where the person has gone missing under suspicious circumstances and you would like to be a guest on Real Talk with Tamara to talk about those cases in hopes of gaining new leads from someone who sees the show and may know something, please call me at 901-573-0748 or email me at tamarathompson33 at yahoo.com. If you have a business and would like to reach thousands of potential customers, advertise on the Real Talk with Tamara show. If you would like more exposure for yourself and you would like to be a guest on Real Talk with Tamara, or if you would like a TV show, give me a call at 901-573-0748 or email me at tamarathompson33 at yahoo.com. So let's talk.